Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss what serial version UID in Java is and why we need to use it. First, let us understand what serialization and deserialization in Java is. Well, serialization is the process where a Java object is converted into a stream of bytes. And deserialization is the other way around. It is the process of converting a stream of bytes into a Java object. Let us understand with an example. Here you can see a class person, right? And we have two data members here, age and name. And we can see here getters and setters for the same. We do have two methods, serialized person and deserialized person. And serialized person, you can see we have a person object here. And we are using file output stream, which is an output stream for writing data to a file. So we wanted to write this person object into this serialized person.txt file, right? And we have an object output stream object as well, which writes primitive data types and graphs of Java objects to an output stream, right? And we are using write object method, which actually writes a specified object, in this case person, to an object output stream, right? So this is what the serialized person method does. So to keep it simple, so this method just writes this person object into stream of bytes into this file called serialized person.txt, right? And this has to be placed in the current directory of my project. And coming to deserialized person method, right? So it does the exactly opposite of what we did in serialized person, right? So we have file input stream and object input streams for reading the file. And we, we are using read object method to actually read the stream of bytes and convert it into an object. And we are caching it into the person object. And we are also reading attribute values here. So this is what deserialize method does. So we are going to use these two methods now. As you can see in the main method, I'm trying to actually call the serialized person. So you can see here, it has to generate the serialized person.txt file here in the current directory. So let us run this. Yep, it is done. Person object serialized successfully and we can see here serialized person.txt. Let us try to open and look into the content. So you can see here, this file is not readable as this is, these are the stream of bytes, right? So this object is a serialized object now. So the serialized object has been written into this file. All right, now how do we read this then? So let's go to the deserialize method. Now we are trying to deserialize the person object. And you can see the object, person object has been deserialized successfully and we were able to get the attribute values back from the serialized object. All right, so now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to add an extra attribute here. That's it. Now going to run it. So try to run the, you know, deserialize method, trying to read the serialized object. And you can see here, we get an exception called invalid class exception, right? So this is because JVM associates a version number of long type called serial version UID with each serializable class. And this ID is used to verify if serialized object and the object loaded during deserialization does have the same attributes and are compatible or not. And in this case, you can see here, so local class incompatible. So this is the serial version UID, a long number, which was the serial version UID generated by JVM for the serialized object. And this is the serial version ID, which was generated just now after we added an extra attribute, right? So as these two does not match, so we are getting the class exception and deserialization actually failed. So how do we fix it? So we can explicitly declare a serial version ID. Most IDs can generate this number automatically. So you can see here, right? It does suggest us add serial version UID field. So it's a static final long data type you can see here, right? So you can also notice this. This is the same number as what we see here. 
right? So in for that matter, we can have any number defined here, right? So we have the serial version UID now. So I'm going to remove this extra attribute now and going to serialize the object again. Okay, we wanted to run the serialize method, right? We wanted the, to repeat the process again with serial version UID added now. So, object serialized successfully. Now, let us try to deserialize it. So we were able to deserialize as well. Now, I'm going to repeat the same what we did earlier without uh, adding serial version UID. What, what did we do? We tried adding another extra attribute after which it actually failed deserializing the object, right? I'm trying the same case now again. And this time it actually works. We are not getting any exception, right? So what happens is uh, actually this serial version UID when we serialized was this number. And now when we try to deserialize as we ex explicitly define this serial version UID, it actually uses during the deserialization process, the same serial version UID will be used to match. So both will get matched exactly and the person object got deserialized successfully. So this is the advantage of having serial version UID defined explicitly. So in summary, it's highly recommended that a class implementing serializable interface declares its own serial version UID. As the generated one by JVM is compiler dependent, and thus may result in unexpected exceptions like what we have seen, right? Invalid class exception. So in this video, what we discussed, like we started like understanding what serialization and deserialization in Java is. And we saw like without serial version UID, what's the issue we get. And finally adding serial, serial version UID, we were able to resolve the issue. And we understood what's the use of this adding serial, serial version UID, right? That's all for this video. If you like it, please like, subscribe and share it. Thanks for watching.